Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome back to my live stream. My name is Jeff Fritz. Today is, what day is today? Today is June 21st, 2019. We're going to write a little bit of code today. How's it going there, chat room? My gosh, I'm seeing a whole bunch of friends over there. Svava already jumping right into it. What mischief, what mischief indeed. Stay tuned. We're going to have a good time learning all about it. How's it going there? Let me say hello to everybody. Uh, Evol GG, hello. Uh, Tagaron is here. Good afternoon from sunny Germany. Great to see that. Rambling Geek, hello, hello. Smab is here. Good to see you again. My gosh, some of, some of you, you're just like me, back after less than 12 hours. It's it's such a quick turnaround that Thursday to Friday uh, on my schedule right now. Didi's here. Good morning from gloomy Bellevue. It can't be as rainy as it has been here in the Philadelphia area. We've got uh, we've got a little bit of um, a little bit of flood emergency in in New Jersey, and uh, the 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 Fritz family backyard looks like a swamp right now. There's been so much rain. It's it's been terrible. Uh, C17, good to see you. Greetings, Ultramark. Hey, 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 Cryptocoder. Namazri, hello. Hack Reactor. Questions about hack. I'm not familiar with Hack Reactor. It is Friday. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Shy Sharp, good to see you. Um, Kasukin, hello, hello. You had train cars of rain dumped in Northern Virginia. Oh, my goodness. And Copper Beardy, good to see you as well. Let me get some music playing and we'll uh we'll talk about the the couple of announcements we've had we'll uh talk about the project we're working on and i'll show you something that i've finished while we weren't looking here um let's see today uh eeny meeny miny this one this is called orchid this is music to code by from our friend mr carl franklin it's been scientifically engineered it's been designed to get you get in the groove get you focused on whatever task it is you might be working on it's playing, I promise. There it is. This one starts quiet but gets really groovy. So, check it out. If you uh, execute the music command in the chat room, you'll get a link to mtcb.pwop.com. You can get your copy of the music. Or you can download the app at Music to Flow by get a couple of songs free. Sign up for the subscription and you'll get new songs delivered to you every month or two. Thanks so much, Carl. We appreciate your support and listening to your amazing music here on the stream. All right, chat room. So, uh, trying to grow some of them at the moment. What are you trying to grow, Copper Beardy? What's my October skit? October's a ways away. Um, I know nothing about October. Orchids. Oh, okay. Very good. Um, so, in July... Uh, we're going to have a number of guests join us throughout the month of July, but I want to call out July 12th and July 19th. July 12th, we're going to run our first workshop in a long time here on the stream. We're going to rerun, we're going to update and present again the ASP Net Core Beginner's Guide to ASP Net Core Workshop. Eight or more hours live here on the channel. We're going to learn all about ASP Net Core 2.2 from beginning soup to nuts okay you're going to get to a point at the end where you'll see how to deploy it to azure or whatever cloud it is that you might be uh you might prefer we like azure here so we'll be using azure the week after july 19th we'll have another eight hour workshop and we're going to do build your first blazer application we're going to learn all about uh web assembly in the browser we're going to build using c sharp and razor templates a really cool application that you can use in the browser i hope you tune in i hope you join us for both of those click the events link up above don't just click it control click it if you just click it you'll navigate away and you won't see me again control click that events link up at the top you'll see both events listed there with the initial information about it i'm going to trim that out with more as i get guests scheduled for those workshops and uh, i'll even put a cool image or two with them as well so check that out in july we have those two scheduled. I have a third event that I'm planning in July that uh, should be pretty fun. We'll show how to upgrade a website from .NET Framework and ASP.NET Core MVC to .NET Core and Razor Pages. So that's coming up all in July. Keep an ear, eye open for that. Click that follow button 
here and you'll uh, you'll be notified when those events go live but when you look at the events there's also a uh, get me a reminder button there too so you can get a reminder put that on your schedule uh, why do you why do you do online in Udemy or something call to just resubscribe for four months thank you so much um, I'm having a hard time with the light here this morning um, thank you so much. Uh, wow. WQ Walter. Thank you for that resub. Four months. Very cool. I appreciate that. And, uh, we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Very cool. Um, why don't I do courses on Udemy? It asks, um, my gosh, why am I having a hard time reading this? Blue Beanie. Um, I do have courses. They're available on Wintelect now. You'll see a, uh, thing up here over here. Uh, not a fan of Udemy. Um, I've, I've supported Pluralsight, I've supported Wintelect now. Those are where you'll find my courses, and you'll find lots of great videos. And you'll be able to ask me questions here live on Twitch four days a week. All right. Um, Ancient Coder, good to see you again. All right. Yeah. So... Let's uh, let's head over to this view. We are at 6673 on the follower count. When that number gets to 8,000 before September 15th, I will dye my beard rainbow as a salute to you, chat room, for .NET Conf and TwitchCon. You'll see me at both events if you're attending both. If you tune in for .NET Conf, and you will tune in for .NET Conf, um, I'll have that rainbow beard on just for you as a salute to you all right why do i feel like there's a bigger story to tell with you and udemy um no there's no bigger story um is it udemy or is it yeah um udemy's known for piracy they've got pirated they've got ripped off content throughout udemy i cannot support them because they, they pirate great content from authors, from content creators like myself, uh, and post it under alternate names, purposely altering it. Um, stuff that they've lifted from other great sources so that creators do not get paid. Udemy is a known place of pirated content. And that's all there is to say about that. It's well known, it's well documented. Um, they're not fighting that problem. They're not dealing with it. It... Uh, there's nothing more I need to say about it. So, um, when you're paying, when you're buying Udemy courses, you're you're paying folks who are stealing content. So, it's more. And besides, if you join folks like me here live. We can learn together. You can ask questions, and we can walk through things together as well. Uh, how can they fight it um, when content is posted to their system instead of approving it immediately? They actually review it. And some of the stuff is clearly obvious that it was lifted from another place. When you see that they've scrubbed off the logos and there's uh, ugly blurs where a, a another provider's logo is. So, Ultramark got commissioned to do a new .NET Core project. Terrific, congratulations. Lannan, morning, good morning, Lannan. Oh, you had internet outage, oh, that's terrible. So, last night, we uh, we spent some time working on our scheduling application, and I put it out there on our shared uh, Azure DevOps. You'll be able to go out here. It's now being built every time there's a pull request. We have a couple of tests that are in the mix. There's, what, about nine tests, right? Nine tests that are being run. Those will be executed, and you'll see... That's better. You'll see whether or not you pass the tests uh, when you submit a pull request into our resource management project. Our resource management project, it's in a shared location out here on GitHub. I closed my one browser. I closed my one browser. Let's open up that again. Try this one more time. There it is. It's in a shared location out here on GitHub where you can uh, 
log some issues, create some pull requests. We had some pull. We had a pull request we received last night to help fix the way that our calendar was being displayed. And you can learn more about the project here as we're building it out. So, just a reminder: this this project is being designed to help a an initially one organization schedule and manage the the time for their volunteers because they schedule classes for for folks to come and learn how to ride horses at a uh, therapeutic riding academy called sebastian riding associates so that's what we're working on that's where we're going to jump in here let me run the application let me show you what it's doing right now where's my visual studio where's my all right let me show you what this does right now Mm. All right, there it goes. Uh, da -da -da, da -da -da. Uh, they prefer two two over three zero. That's fine. I should find that vod after Jeff discussed which one to choose. Which one to choose them? Yeah, two two is um, both two two and three zero are going to be current releases. Um, once the next one's released, you're going to be encouraged to move on to the next version of it. And you're going to, uh, you're not going to get the long-term support that you will with the 2.1 release of ASP.NET Core. And soon to be the 3.1 release when that comes out. Those are the scheduled long-term servicing release. So we've got a very simple user interface now. We have it hooked up so that you can log into this. When I click through to schedule my availability, you can see I've got some information coming out of the database and it's being mapped now appropriately over here in the calendar, I can see here's a day that I have uh, an appointment scheduled. What we're going to hook up here is I want to be able to click on this day and in the day view down here, show the, uh, show the actual schedule of content. All right. GitLab migration. Why GitLab migration? Uh, I'm not sure why you would. So, let's talk about and let's build through this and see if we can hook up these two events so we can click over here and trigger an update and show exactly what's happening down in the... Uh, on this date, this selected date, down here in the... in the day view. Every time I say day view, I want to sing a Calypso song. Um, but we're not going to do that. All right. Um, let me go back over to my code. So, in painting, we've we've got two problems we need to solve here, right? Uh, let's open Notepad. Let's write these down. In looking at this, right? There's two problems that I need to solve here um, to get this interaction. There's another problem going on over here with our data entry, but We'll figure that one out later. Um, first thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that I can click on one of these and have it populate down here. So I need the uh, click on a day in the month view. Show in day view. I need that feature. Um, I then need to be able to, I need to be able to paint um, a schedule in the day view across grid lines right because if you look at this I have one here right now that goes from 9 to 11 it would be great to be able to draw a box from 9 down to 11 and put inside that box here's the value here's the name of the event and at some point we're gonna to need to be able to click into that event and be able to change things in the future, I'm going to want to be able to click and do all kinds of interactions over here in this. But let's start with just painting content into it. All right. Um, yeah. How am I going to paint content into it? So I have my day view. My day view has a selected date. Okay, but mm, selected date and today, I think are, well, hang on, 
let's open over here um, day picker this is our month view right um, this date dot date that's what we're using to okay that's fine but today is yeah okay we are using the today constant in order to get to today but we're starting with our selected date being today right when you first enter this so if you click on a different date I should be able to just change select the date and it cascade up and cascade down because I'm using this cascade parameter feature here cascade parameter is managed up here inside of my availability component my availability component defines this cascading value here and it starts with date time today and it's being passed into the selected value object and as a name um, so we will pass that information around so this gets passed into both the date picker and day view components good morning JAF 1020 good to see you there she is hello hello um, so what I'm thinking is inside of my day picker when you will make the each one of the days clickable when you click on a day will change the selected date to whatever that date is that you clicked and it should cascade up and cascade back down into my day view so that it'll change the selected date here and we'll need to wire up an event that when selected date changes we repaint the schedule hey Janescu, good to see you hello hello um all right thinking this through so let me go back to the day picker each one of these spans we need to put an on click event on this now so that we can trigger the change of date but we need to actually put a date value with these so that it knows which date is which right uh, mm -hmm. Right, because I can't just... Right? I need to put the... I need to put the date here somewhere on each one of these individual ones. Right? Am I thinking this through right pro correctly, chat room? Um, right, if I put in on click... And I do something like this... Oh, you stink. right um, I want to handle an event here and I want to I want to say uh, selected date equals and I'm going to set it to the date for this this item which is going to be uh, <laughs> first day of not first day of month day of week um, how do I know the date that's on this? I'm doing this for loop to output these. I feel like I need to put a property on this or something so that it, um, so that I can remember it when the click happens. You know? Hmm getting confused here <laughs> well the selected date is going to be in the same month as the current selected date right uh, we were watching a documentary on African wildlife my son said it's difficult to spot cheetahs I think they come that way I see what you're doing there. Well, okay, it's going to be this day, but um, this day is going to change. Wait, I've got an extra equals in there. Right, if I do that... Um, right? So, come on. Yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. 
which means I also want this to have a pointer. Uh, so I don't want to just put those on here. I wanna, let's make this a uh, let's make this a day. Let's add that class. Add some CSS here so that in our month picker. Um, here we go. I want to put that pointer class on it so, you, so that you know it's clickable. Um, right, let's just move this down here. So now you'll know that it's clickable. Maybe we put some sort of on hover event over it as well at some point. Uh, this one. So now I have those. Uh, I mean, let's see what that does. Uh, restart. Right, that one's the restart. No, that's browser link. Oh no! Uh, it's yeah. It's. I don't think that variable is going to be there because we're going to be out of scope. Right? There's a change in scope here that's happening. You know. Um. Let's see what happens. Let's see. That works though. Okay. Okay. Come on, load. Do it. Do it. You can do it. Load. Where are you? It's taking its good old time starting here. My container was running. My database container was. Right? Database container. That one's fine. Uh, What's we're good there. What's over here? Don't need that one. Come on. Tell me my database is running. Where is it? Yeah, still running from last night. Somebody wake up the database. Just do it. I don't, I don't get it. Why is that not working? Just all of a sudden, poof. Th uh, this is dead also. Oh, I feel wonderful now. All right, let's force the issue here and I'm going to rebuild. Hey, fuck, uh, is that Faku Rodriguez? Hello, hello, and Pat Pat is here. How's it going? Let's see if we can get this restarted and running pr properly. Yeah, rebuild succeeded, good, run. Come on, get started. Waiting, there we go, thank you. All right, so now I'm back over in my availability. There we go, oh, that's not good. Now all of a sudden everything has, well, that's a CSS thing. Let's take a look back at that. So my style, it looks like, yeah, I've got the day term defined twice. Um, let's call this day of week, right? D-O-W, day of week. And go back to the day picker and where I was outputting these. Let's do this. I'm going to, uh, I should be able to just, right? Can I just, there we go. And I can retype all of them at the same time. Pretty cool there with that multi, multi cursor select in Visual Studio. Um, let me restart. Now that I've got a separate class for those, it should paint it better. Uh, what work won't work is that cascading value is a constant, so you can't update it. Nope. Um, I've been updating it. It's not a constant. It's all right. It's okay. And I've been seeing it update properly as well. So, all right. So now I mouse over these, and I do get properly the uh, the pointer. And that's fine up there and if I click over here well I can't see that it's done anything but let's see if we can put a breakpoint right in here right did it put a breakpoint there because I want to be able to inspect when that click happens it's this day is 622 yeah it's got the right day and selected date it is setting properly so now let's let's cheat a little bit inside my day view 
Um, let's output at the bottom after we output our grid here. Let's just put today is and output uh, selected date. Right. That should update properly. I think it should. Hey, Dryad T is here. Hello, hello. So good to see you. Great to see my friends. Love the pride, the pride fish. The pride fish. Okay, there's a lot of proud things in this world, but in this pride month, the proud fish? All right. That's a thing. Um, all right, so that's going to do, da da. So now down here, today is 621. And when I click on the 22nd, Ooh, it didn't update that. It sh um, I th there's a thing with with updating properties that we now need to start inspecting. But I think I needed to bind that. Uh, Control Alt period will do a select next instance. Ooh, I didn't know that. North American date time format. Yes, because I'm North American, it is outputting North American date time format right now um let me change that i think that needs to be a bind i think in the day view right right if i do something like this right um uh i don't know i'm not in that syntax yet and uh selected date right that should re-update it when it comes through mm -hmm. going back to your change of class name to d-o-w yeah what about it yeah that's okay um back over here oh it didn't bind it i thought you could bind that you did some blazer coding, some coding blazer streams yesterday. Nice. Um, yeah, I want to be able to see that update, but it doesn't look like it's passing through. Bind text. Let's see if that works. Banath is just resubscribed for 13 months. 13 months! Thank you so, so much. I very much appreciate that, uh, that subscription. And, uh, we will make a donation to Veterans Who Code. That is very kind. More than a year with us. That is tremendous. Um, I very much appreciate your support. And, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll keep things rolling here. You're gonna be in the uh, multicolored hat. I've got new hat badges coming in about the next week or so. We'll have more hat badges, more loyalty badges coming. And we'll also have, um, we have some new screens. I'm going to be redoing the layout here on stream. Now, when I click these, it isn't updating. It isn't coming all the way down into the, uh, into the day view when I click. It's clearly firing the event, right? If I go back to the day picker, we put the breakpoint here, right? And I click on something. This day that it's passing through is, well, it's the, f the first. Did I click on the first? The second? What? The third? What? The first? fourth is it firing every single one of these it's firing every event that's not right either uh found that found with blazer that uh, it's hard to know what elements can be binded against or not and it right if i let me try this one more time um so this here if I click on the 14th this day see it's look at this it's going through and firing for every 
single one of those on clicks. That's weird. That's really weird. Um, Because that isn't what we were seeing. You're watching it render each item, not the event. No, I'm, I have the breakpoint on the event inside of here. Right? Um, I mean, if I change this... SNB! SNB just resubscribed for 14 months. Oh my gosh. Thank you so, so much for that resub. Uh, and we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Um, it's the for loop that creates it so it breaks on every iteration. That's okay. Not what I expected, but okay. Um, but there's a, uh, right, there's an on property changed event that we need to handle, I believe, in the day view, isn't there? Right, on on parameter set. Let's do this. It, right, on parameter set. There it is. I want to repaint that, se that selected date. Right? Try and do it in method and the this day as an argument. Perhaps this needs uh, it needs this setting of the cascading parameter in the function block. Um, what I believe is happening is the on parameter set needs to repaint the screen. Needs to force the screen to be repainted. Yes, we're using Blazor. Right. So, um, <laughs> right. I believe you call state has changed and it forces the component to be re-rendered. Hey, Lily Hazel. So I should see that fired. And we'll be able to trigger the state has changed forces the control to be re-rendered if there's any changes. Hey, wheelchair Sean. Good to see you. Seeing some folks back again after our quick night last night. So there, parameter is set. So if I click on another one here, yeah, it's not, wow. Um, wow. I thought we were seeing it come through here. The wheelchair is silent. All right, fantastic. How's it going there, Sean? I just, I read, usually read most folks uh, uh, full handle, so. Not a problem. I will remember that for next time, Sean. All right. Um, yeah, that cascading parameter should trickle up to the availability to uh, here. Oh, but you're saying because date time today is... Hmm. All right. So if we change this and we have uh, date time... Uh, selected date throw a get set on that and we set this by default to date time today we change this instead of the constant to selected date that feels weird but I'm gonna roll with it so what's been suggested is because that's not a constant now it's now a property it should trickle Right, we should see that parameter get cascaded back and forth between these um, between these controls that we're building, these components. So we'll click through, and and then yep, state has changed. And then continue. I'll click on another one of these. No. Hmm. Uh, we're getting in the way of you watching. Not a problem. It is preview five. Yeah, it is. But this, I we have this working in other samples and things. I had this working in a uh, 
in some code that I was doing last week. Um, think, 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 think. Um, <laughs> how do I want to investigate this? Um, yeah, how you do things it changed. Um, and I don't want to upgrade to to preview six because it's gonna literally break everything that I've written. And I'm going to need to uh, change <laughs> a lot. Hmm. <laughs> um. Right, if I put a span here. And we say uh, selected date is... so that we see what it looks like from that control, that component, so that when we update, we see it in the other component as well. Use a custom setter on the parent selected date so you can breakpoint it in the selected, yeah. That's a good idea too. That's a good idea so we can see if and how and when it's breaking. I'm gonna turn that off for right now. So there's the current selected date as defined by this. If I click that, that changes, but it isn't trickling over to this one. Usually you would call state has changed on the parent. Right, so on the parent, which is the availability control. Come here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right. Um on parameter set, let's do one. Um, on parameter set. Let's just put a breakpoint there so we can see that thing fire. Right, because it should trickle back Right, I feel like these are, you know, minor steps that we're going through here just to understand the uh, the life cycle of these values. So, current value is the 21st because it defaults to today. I'll click another date. No. It's not... Uh, um, so, this is a cascading parameter named select date it defaults to date time t I shouldn't have to have this default it should it should be populated coming in from that top level control let's see if that works hey the simian good to see you all right So on parameter set of the availability component, good. So it did properly pick up what the today's date is. I'll click over to one of these. It, it's changing the selected date, but that as a cascaded parameter isn't firing up. G Fuel flavor of the day today, I'm drinking uh, Tropical Rain. Do it in the setter for the cascaded select date. So you can read state has changed in the parent. Um, these are things that I shouldn't have to do. Let's go pull up some documentation here and make sure that I've, uh, I'm on the right path here. Um, crumbs. Cascade parameter, right? No. What? Cascading value. Let's try that. Oh my god. Yes, kittens just resubscribed for seven months. I'm lurking while working. Don't call me out. I'll find you and take your Jack Daniels away. <gasps> hey, fierce kittens. I'm not calling you out at all. Thanks so much for that resub. I appreciate it. And we'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. All right. Nothing more to say about fierce kittens here. Nothing more. 
Nothing more to see here. Move along, move along. All right. Um, yeah, move along, move along. There we go. Um, yeah, for some, why isn't... Right, and not two, two, three. Get the blazer. Uh, <laughs> and I was looking for cascading value. Really? Cascading... No. Really? Really? It was here yesterday. Uh, sites, docs, Microsoft com, Blazor, cascading value are not automatically two-way bound by Blazor. I thought they were. I could have sworn we had that working properly. Uh, let's take a look, see. Cascading values and parameters. Uh, ta to make use of cascading values, components declare cascading parameters using cascading parameter, blah, blah, blah. Binding with a string value, string name value is relevant, okay? Cascading values are bound to cascading parameters by type. In the sample app, blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, consider the following tab set. Okay, cascading value parameters tab set component uses the tab set component, which contains several tab components. Okay, got it. The child tab components aren't explicitly passed as parameters. Instead, the child tab components are passed. So, what you're saying... Capture the containing tab set as a cascading parameter so the tab components add themselves to tab, spat, tab set and coordinate which tab set is active. So what I'm hearing is maybe we need another object, a third party object, that will hold right an object that we can use, uh, that we can pass by reference, that will hold that state and since everybody points to that same instance object, those parameters update. Is there a way to do web-based C-sharp without IIS in ASP.NET Core? Yes. You can use, uh, with ASP.NET Core, you can use Kestrel. The Simeon just subscribed. Thank you so much for that uh, subscription to Simeon. I very much appreciate it. We'll make a donation to Veterans Who Code. Thanks so much for joining us. You're going to get a purple hat badge for that subscription. But Fierce Kittens, you should be able to use um, Kestrel. Kestrel is the web server that comes with ASP.NET Core and will run in a console-based application. Or any type of application. You can run it inside of a... Uh, inside of a Windows Forms, inside of a WPF application. It's it's a standard garden variety .NET component. Check out, um, to answer Fierce Kitten's question, um, Damien, uh, Damien Edwards did a, uh, a presentation at NDC Oslo a couple years ago where he showed how to use Kestrel with Windows Forms. Um, and it was in uh, .NET Core and Kestrel. Which year is this? No. Um, no. Take a look. It's like, yeah, I think this is it. NDC Oslo. It's either 2017 or 2016. There's a great video that shows... Um, where they embedded Kestrel, embedded the web server inside of a, a, a .NET framework Windows Forms application. So that you, they started the application, they pushed the button, and the web server started running. So, it, I know it's not for your bot, but it, just to show how you can crisscross across those different things. Um, have some internal tools driven by PHP. I have desire to unify our languages so everyone knows how to work with it. <gasps> You need to check out peachpie.io. P 
Peach Pie will let you run PHP content under .NET. It's really cool. It's completely free. Open source and fantastic. All right, let me get back to to the problem here. Hey, Chillax Thor. Squirrel. Um, so there's there was a model that I'm gonna actually reference the Blazing Pizza example here. Uh, that's on GitHub.net presentations. The Blazing Pizza sample um, in the here we go. Uh, <laughs> no, show order status. I forget which component it is. One of the components creates the object that shares. Uh, <laughs> it passes along. It has a cascading parameter in this. Was that it? Data binding? And they set up their own, <coughs> excuse me, um, and they, oh, you know what they did? I know what they did. There's, it's not the event callback. I think it's over here. Uh, let's find, nope, it's not in this one. They eventually refactor. Yeah, state management. This is it. Um, so they add a state scope in a scoped state. Oh boy, in a scoped scope. Wow, that's confusing. No, it's not that confusing. All right. So they're not that expensive. They're British. Um. Fierce Kittens, you mod everywhere. How do you find the time of day? Well, it's... Actually, I gave Fierce Kittens more of a... Uh, uh, more of a friendly mod status here. Um, she's welcome to use it as need be. Space Shot! Hello! Just... Yeah, it's an honorary sword. It's an honorary S-word. So let's do this. This... That's what I'm thinking of here. Let's do this. Let's create a class... Right, and I think, I, I think SQL Mr. Magoo is gonna is gonna agree with me on this. I'm gonna create a class here, and let's call this um, let's call this uh, I don't want to call it date state. Let's call this uh, schedule state. Right. It starts with a bloody S. What? Who? Um. Okay. So we have a schedule. I want to pass the schedule around so that it updates and it maintains. So I'm going to set up a property here. Um, and we'll have a schedule. Yep. Um, you're supposed to jump over to the next thing. I see the tabbing here is still awful. Um, and we'll have a date time for the selected date. This will be the schedule state that we'll pass around and we will make this. We'll, we will make this scoped, right? Uh, schedule state. So now if I go back to my components, it should pass it around a little bit easier, right? Um, this is the day, day picker. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, good. I am going to, I'm going to inject it. Right? Oh my gosh. Schedule states. And I want to call this schedule state. Why doesn't it know what schedule state is? Uh, what the heck? Inject, inject? Huh? Right, it knows what that is. Yes. No. No. 
Why don't you know what it is? It's in uh, data. There we go. All right, so now I have scheduled state. So I can... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's see. If I do... Hmm. Let me go back over to that. So it's injected. And it doesn't look like it's actually cascading anymore, is it? Right? No. So if it's being injected and passed around, I don't need... I don't need to inject it. I think. Right? So this would be, uh, right, schedule state. Oh, come on now. My schedule state. I'm going to make this my. Why don't you know what that is? I'm injecting it right there. Why is it an object? Johan, thank you so much. You have just resubscribed for 13 months. Yeah, thank you very, very much for that very kind subscription. Uh, my schedule state dot. See, it doesn't. Yeah, there's there's IntelliSense here that's not behaving properly. Um. So that should behave correctly, right? Why is it highlighting the next? Fine. Um, day view. So if we inject that, I've got my schedule. I don't need that anymore. And I can say equals uh, my, right? My schedule state dot selected date. So now that's being passed around. And this is my schedule state uh, schedule. And I should be able to reference that. Yeah, Visual Studio Preview is having a lot of issues here. Um, let's see if that solves my problem here. Um... Where's the delegate type? I'm not... Cannot reference non-static field method. What do you mean you can't reference it? Uh, don't I need the cascading for the signal or thingy? I don't think so. Yeah. Oh yeah, there is a definitely space trend this week. We did, we did SpaceX, we did Apollo. Oh yeah, making it through all of them. Uh, I'm. Um. Okay, do I need to initialize these? Add an on initialize. Hey, Top Networks. Welcome. Um, no. All right. So if I override on init, right? Can I say, wow, 53, five, uh, 53 for 97. Welcome, I appreciate the follow. Can I can I now say my schedule state dot yeah, okay that looks like it's working. Then I can say my schedule 
equals, uh, let's just move that down here and I can get rid of that. Right, that looks like it works. I think. Uh, let's get rid of that. Um, over here. Uh, property, property. Yep. Okay. Let's override on init. And we will say, uh, okay, selected date. And I will just grab this, put it there. And I should be able to set my schedule and do the exact same thing. And let's see if that works. Blazing Pizza is not updated for preview six yet. Um, let me know what questions you have about C Sharp. We'll walk through and we'll explain things as we're going along here, top networks. Um, is there something happening this week in space tech? Asks uh, Bob Ingas. Um, this weekend, I think it's Saturday night at like 2 a.m., um, Falcon Heavy is going to launch from uh, Orlando. Franco Manzetti. Thanks so much for the follow. I appreciate you joining us. And I look forward to seeing you in the chat room. Yeah, Falcon Heavy launch. Why isn't that... I, I don't... Are, are you kidding? Why isn't it responding? Just all of a sudden, yep, poof. Like nothing's working. Oh, I hit that break point. It didn't highlight for me. Try again. Three-year-old trying to say Falcon Heavy results in... Oh. Oh, the simian. I'm sorry. Uh, let's try this again. Click through. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. Huh? So it doesn't have my schedule here yet. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we. I heard about that bug, Johan. It's a very curious bug. All right, so now we're at a very interesting place where we tried to pass around that instance, that stateful object, and it's not picking up and initializing. Which tells me I need to put an if statement on here. What bug was fixed last November? Constructor firing order issue suggests Jeremy. Um, feels like it. Definitely feels like it. I feel like I'm I'm crisscrossing things here because I've got. Um, da -da -da. No, we're good. Um, right, I'm trying to pass through this the state, the parameter. Why did I do this in C sharp and not PHP? I like C sharp. It's a brand new technology, the the user interface that we're using here. Um, so we're giving that a shot. We're we're seeing how this works. Yep, I do understand it. I understand C-sharp, but we're running into this issue with the... This is a new user interface uh, library. And how we're passing the parameters back and forth between the, the hierarchical components here is not quite behaving properly. Uh, you've been using lots of Laravel. That's nice. Check out... If you're, if you're interested in PHP and you want to see it work... Uh, work well with yeah there you go 
work well with .NET, check out Peach Pie. It'll take PHP, compile it, and run under the .NET runtime, which ends up being a lot faster than the PHP runtime. Why? Uh, okay, I'm getting, I'm confused now at this point. These parameters that I'm trying to pass in and use in these different components aren't behaving the way I expect. Right? And, and the documentation that I'm seeing over here is confusing and not clear to me. Um, the sample here passes, and, and it comes back to a little bit of what Mr. Magoo was suggesting with the um, the binding, not properly. Where do I populate the data? The data is being populated in my um, availability, right? So I've got cascading values here, and these are being loaded uh, here on a knit. Reset schedule item sets. Uh, where is it? Oh, I'm sorry. It calls get my availability, passes that into my schedule, and sends that along. Um, oh, but you know what? That doesn't put it into the state object. Mm. Ah, okay, okay. So I'm implementing, I'm not implementing my schedule here yet. It doesn't have reference to it to be able to update and pass around. But if I inject into it, does it have that information? Did that sample code still use cascading parameter? So if I look back over at the workshop, let me fast forward here. So the app state pattern moves shared state outside the components into ordered state. Components call methods to trigger a state change. So if I look at this again, um, since we're storing the list of pizzas in the current order on the index component user, state gets lost if user leaves the index page. To set the state, to see this action, oh man, add a pizza to the current order, blah, blah, blah. We're going to fix this bug by introducing the app state pattern. Basics that are that you want to add an object to the DI container that you want to coordinate between related components. Right. Because the app state object is managed by the DI container, it can outlive the components. Good. So we created, in our case, schedule state, and we store it in the current scope. We need to inject it and populate it. And our other components should be able to receive it. We're not populating it here. Yeah. So let's try that. I'm not actually injecting and populating it in my, in my availability here. So let's uh, inject Really? What? Really? Why did it do that? Uh, data schedule state, and we'll call this my schedule state. So down here, then preview, preview, preview. Yeah, no. So my schedule state, and we're going to inject into it uh, the selected date is. Select a date. My schedule state. Schedule. Uh, my schedule. So that should now be inserted into that object and available in the rest of the components if I, if I understand this properly. Let's give it a shot and see what it has. And we'll track these down. I think you're... Mr. Magoo is right. We're going to need to... We're going to need to check the properties here. Make sure it's being passed around properly. Loading. All right. 621, 621. If I choose a different one here. 617, but this didn't update. Let's make sure that that value that it's painting in the 
day view is correct. Selected date. I feel like that's not setting. Yeah, it's not setting it. So that update is happening properly. Right, but I'm not sure that it's going all the way down into my state object here. Let's put a break on this, see if I can get that to trigger. No, it's not setting the state of that either. Um, you're gonna have to update the state and have the update trigger state has changed. Uh, in the pattern you can use with each component subscribing to property change type. Ugh. Ugh. All right, hang on. So, right, it's not saving it back into there on the click. Oh man, this is... So on click, it's setting the selected date. It's not actually setting. I don't need these properties now, do I? Because I've got it in in up there. I'm right. I've let's back these out. I don't need those, right? Um, which means I also don't need this. Which means I can get rid of. Oh my gosh, no! Hang on, I'm getting confused here, right? You're binding to a local parameter. Right, I'm not binding to the injected state. Right, selected date. Right, I should change this instead of get set, instead of these two. We should put a custom accessor in here. So get returns my schedule state, selected date. And so that it sets instead uh, my schedule state. Really? Um, dot, and it doesn't. Are you kidding? There we go. Um, selected date equals value. So I can do the same thing down here with these accessors. Uh, return, right? My schedule state, schedule. My schedule state, schedule equals value. And I'm not actually going to be doing a set on that yet. But that should paint things properly on the day picker. If I go over to the day view, and instead of having the gates that do, I want to do these exact same things here, like that. Custom setter in the state that, that fires a schedule changed event that component subscribed to will close the loop. Do I need that? Right? Do I need an event callback on those? I don't think so. The components that can then have state has changed themselves. So you're talking about doing an on state changed on these. Let me see what happens with this right now. <laughs> All right, so now we are properly setting the, that date. Good. Setting it a lot there. Okay. 621 on both of these. It's setting the selected date. 
618. It didn't update down here. <clears throat> okay. So the suggestion is we need to be able to trigger on init. I'm setting the values to themselves. <clears throat> um, let's go over here. You're right. I don't need this. You're right. That's too much. If I go over to day view, I don't need those as well because they're coming in from the ejected value. But I should be able to see this. I, I am going to want to see the state has changed on the components right as the data changes here let's take a look see this and all right i'm going to turn that off i don't need to break on that i can see it's breaking so this is state has changed on the day view because it's being painted there it is i click on a different day i'll choose this one that updated but it didn't pass it back to that so i'm running into the same deal the same problem where it's updating one and not the other now the the point that SQL Mr. Magoo is suggesting is I need to trigger the event that says, oh, something happened here. You need to go do something with it. Jeez. <coughs> um, okay. Let me go look at the, look at the complete source for this and see how it's passing that state back and forth because it doesn't... Mm. Right, the order review, these are not what I'm looking for. Order state, that's what I'm looking for. So there's the method to show that dialog. Methods to clear out stuff. And it doesn't have an event handler. Hmm. State has changed is the setter when it's clicked. So if I do a state has changed. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah. That's not in this. Um, right, state has changed is right there. A call to state has changed isn't required. State has changed is automatic callback to re-render the parent component. This is on the event callback. Each component that consumes the state needs to know about a change in event is a simple way to do that. Yeah. So help me out here. Um, right, so I'm clicking over here. I'm setting the date. So what, instead of setting the event, I put a method together that says here that defines the selected date. Have it se select the selected date, but that won't trigger an event that listens for it. Yeah. Right, so if I had, uh, do, 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 if I jump over here to this, right, if I had public void uh, select date, right, if we make this private set, I need a state that says I've changed. Yeah, how do I set that state? Right, if I have a method here, are you kidding? Uh, new date. 
right? I could say selected date equals new date. And I could put that, look at that indent, that is ugly. Really? Oh my gosh. But I need to raise an event. Why do I need to? Thank you. Because the components need to know what was ha what was raised. So if I had a public event, um, on selected date changed, right? Make that an event handler. Um, I need to create some arguments for that. Ugh. Give it that name. Right? Public class uh, selected date changed args. Um, event args. Oh my gosh. Um, put a property on this. Date time. Selected date. Okay, now I've got an event. Um, I don't need that. I can do it like this. Thank you. So I, I okay. So I observable I thought is what I had with this thing and what the cascade parameter does. It's not clear that either of those work properly, but by putting that event handler over there means um, da -da 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 -da, on day view. Yeah, I don't need to be able to set it here. You're never setting the selected date on this one, so that's okay. My schedule, you're never setting, you're not setting yet, so I'm, I don't care about that either. Um, but what I do want to do is on init, my schedule state, Oh, are you kidding? You're not going to give me the event handler there? Ugh. Um, object and the args. So what I want to do when the selected date changed is I want... Uh, I want to set my... I don't need to set the schedule state. It knows what it is. Right? I want to just say this state changed. I want to force that. to force the repaint because repaint because I know that that thing happened. Uh David Horvath, good to see you. Nope. Ran into a compile issue. What am I th this is worthless. Selected date cannot be used. Yeah, because I turned that into a get in here. So now what I want to do, instead of that, and instead of that, is select a date. Instead of doing this, I want to say um, my schedule state select date this day. Right? Hey, yes. Invoke state has changed because of context. Where am I doing that? Here, state has changed. Yeah, in the event handler. Right, I don't need to do invoke. Really? I can't just call state has changed directly? I mean, all right. 
see if that does it. The the messages being outputted there are not helpful. Um <laughs> Um, oh, you know what I should do? I could just put in the set here, just to make things easier. Uh, my schedule state, uh, select date value. That'll work. Really? And more of this. Schedule state, uh, huh? What do you mean it's never used? I wor wired that up. Um, <laughs> Come on now. Do this, that, right? Yeah, thank you. Do it. Why is it saying the event isn't being used when I'm clearly using it in the... Hmm. Let's see what happens. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Do it live! Yeah, we're, we're trying. All right, state has changed. Painting the day view. Good. 621, 621. So that value is being passed around. I'll click over here. No, didn't pass it. Did it actually raise that event here? Right, if I click on one of these. No. Um, oh, wait a sec. I didn't, I not, I'm not raising the event here. So if I raise the event, that's going to be uh, on selected state change, invoke, and I need to pass in um, I don't care what the sender is. New arguments. And it's going to be new date. There we go. Now we're raising the event and it should walk, or, walk, walk down there. Robert Table. Robert Tables, wow. good to see you. You can change the verbosity of MS build output to the output window. Yes, you can. Um... The output coming for the Razor generation, the Razor compilation, is a bunch of uh, junk right now. Object reference not set to an instance of an object. What do you mean it's not set? Um, okay, so we need to put a question mark there. So that, because it's not in there, it only executes that. Right, only execute, raise that event if the event is wired up. Otherwise, I don't care. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on. This should work now. So I get that pass through. Yep, there's my state has changed on the day view. Let's see if that fires now. I'll choose, I'll choose one other one here. Here we go. Invoke state has changed. So the argument's being passed through. Selected date is now 610, so we're going to invoke sec, uh, state has changed. If I come up here to this, it has the appropriate selected date, so this should update. And it does. We got it. We got it. We did the thing. All right. So if I click on another date here, we turn off some of these. Right, 622, I've got the same value in both places. Cool. So I can navigate around and I'm passing that around. I'm feeling a heck of a lot better now that we got that working. It can be done exactly how I want it. Or how Mr. Magoo wanted it. The only question is, are you the man to do it? Darn Skippy, I'm the right guy to do it. Thank you, Jeremy Knight. Darn Skippy, indeed, we got it. Okay. Next step. I need to get the... The schedule right so click on the day and month view show it in the day view so we got that working next paint the schedule in the day view across the grid lines with what that thing is yeah look at those gritties 
Oh, man. Whoo! Yeah, Sean, using the question mark, that this is the, uh, right when I execute that invoke over here, right? That's the, the null coalescing operator. It'll only execute the stuff after here if this isn't null. Yep, it's a shortcut. Whew. That, that was wearing on me. Like, why am I not getting this working properly? Thank you. Thank you so much, chat room. Especially to Mr. Magoo for uh, helping clear that up for us. Big, big thanks on that. Okay. Next step. Let's see if we can get it to paint the... Um, let's see if we can get it to paint the actual element inside of the day view. So, inside of day view, we're going to invoke state has changed, which, right, when the selected date changes, we don't want to just do that. We want to, we want to, we want to add new spans over here appropriate for those objects. They're going to appear inside of day view. And they're not grid items. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right. They come from the schedule. Yes. So I have my schedule. We're bound to that. When the date changes, we're going to invoke state has changed. So I should, if I'm thinking this through properly, I should be able to do a... F uh, come on now. Uh, yeah, for each is probably going to be okay. Um, for the item in uh, my schedule state, uh, I should be able to just save my schedule. Come on now. Right, my schedule. Which is pulling out of the schedule state there. And I want to get the... For right now, we're going to do this with schedule items. At some point, we're going to need to expand this so we handle recurring schedules and schedule exceptions as well. By changing this in the future, we should be able to just do a for each on these and it will work. So we want to output, we want to do this for each to generate a collection of um, HTML elements for each one of those schedule items and have them positioned appropriately in the grid. Uh, it's Mike asks, what's the fastest way to set a variable's value depending on which one's null? So like set to this, otherwise default to this. Um, so if you're trying to set a variable. Really? Really? Give me a method here. Right? So if I define a method like this. Um, var this thing equals. Uh, right? something to check for null. You want to see if it's null? Right? Um, you could do this and right um, is null not null. Now another way that I've seen folks do this is you can say is null and it'll do a null check against that. There's also I've seen some uh, folks have done this as well. Uh, come on now. Uh, private object not null equals new object. And be able to say is not null. And it'll check this thing if it is not null. Right? Uh, da -da -da -da. Um, like that. There we go. All right, it's not gonna there. And that'll run really fast. Yeah, you can do the double if you want to. If you want to set it to something else, right? If you don't care to do something here, you can also do that. So, a couple different ways to do that in C Sharp. All right. Be 
because display name is null. If you don't see their capitalization, you can do display name. Yes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. You could propagate the schedule items in the injected my schedule state type. Yes. Yeah, we can do that. Um, yeah. But I need to figure out how to paint these inside of this. Now, the suggestion we got for this was to use this type of layout. Uh, no. Position items shrink to fit. And we have to specify the grid column and grid row. Right, we wanted to end up with something that looks like this. Where it's going to cross. Like that. You want offsets to place your positioned items left, right, top, and bottom. Offsets will apply inside the grid area defined by for the positioned items following the rules explained above. So for this item, position absolute grid column, one auto, two auto for the row. Okay. Um, left, right, top, bottom. Hmm, okay. So I feel like I don't want to specify the row, but I do want to specify the top and the, well, the top on it and the height so that I know how to interact with it. Right? So I'm going to create a span and let's call this a schedule item. Um, and let's output for the text inside of it the name. That's better. But the style for each one of these is a little bit different. I want it in column one. Right? I guess schedule item we can always force into actually into column two, grid column two slash auto, I think I want to do there, right? Um, right, so down here in day view, day view, um, not inside of that. Um, oh, that's not gonna, maybe it will. Hmm. Um, looking at the day views, right, I think I need to put a class on this so that these all appear the same. Let's call it something like that. So I have, instead of this, we'll call it to get that extra qualification. So now I can do day view, um, and we'll call these schedule item, right? Now... I want to have a border on these, um, and let's make it let's make it navy just so it shows up. Let's put a background color on these, and um, I'm going to use my signature color. Um, and I I know I want them to appear in grid column two auto. Right? Because I want it in the second column. Is there something like row span, span it from start time to stop time row and offset it on top? Yes. That's what I'm going to put in. Right? So this will make sure it appears in the second column. Um, and I'll offset it. Right? With some sort of offset here. Let's see if I can... Let's just have it output the uh, too short time string. Let's just output that for now. Just to get it to paint something on the screen so we, we can be sure that it's actually appearing in the second column. And then we'll work on the offset. Let's see how that looks. And hopefully we'll also get it 
painting those appropriately as we right as we uh, change dates so availability I don't need that anymore okay so we're getting somewhere I did the for loop across across schedule items and it output all the schedule items even though it's the wrong schedule item I only want to output schedule items where the start date is for the date selected good it is outputting it properly in the second column good I don't think I want to make it the full width of it though it works sort of I agree Sean it, it's working sort of I've got it positioned I've got it doing the for loop um, but I only want it to do the for loop for the dates that are selected so let's go back to day view and I don't want to just go through schedule items I want to make sure I do where right uh, s dot start date time dot date right date yeah uh, equals selected date dot date so I make sure that I only get the date that's selected and that should only output those appropriately and it isn't quite quite positioned properly so let's go back to the CSS I also want to make these positioned absolute if I understand this properly right position absolute specify the grid column let's offset the width by a couple of pixels just so it isn't right so let's have it offset 10 let's have it offset 10 from the right so it fills the whole thing and see what it looks like full width if no other schedule items half if two etc yes All right, click through this. So it shouldn't show initially, good. And if I click through to these others, it's updating the date, good. If I click on the 22nd, it's not relative to the rest of the grid. I think I need to make the grid position relative and, and it should appear properly, right? So if I, Put position relative on this. That's better. That's better. Ooh, Sean, I, that's a good idea. Can we use fraction for this? I don't know. That's a good question. Um, it's also just, it's not, it's not the right height yet, right? I haven't specified a height yet. And I don't know if, it, right, the height is doing some math. Let's do some math here real quick. For this, where, where purposely this height is, is two fractions because it's two hours, right? The full day that we're displaying is, uh, is uh, uh, 12 hours. It's 12 fractions. So can I, can I do this? can't say grid height repainting the schedule grid with the right number of columns right now the schedule grid doesn't have columns yet sure it does and look it even right it repaints and hides appropriately that's pretty cool right so I'm feeling good about that I need to specify the top though Can I say, can I say that? Will that work? Oh, it's not gonna do that for me because I updated, right? It doesn't know what that is yet. I need to recompile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, can, can that be a thing? Do, 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 do. I might have it might have this thing positioning properly and then I'll feel really good availability right load the screen do it and I'm, I'm forcing it yeah the top it isn't gonna do top proper like properly like that 
So how can I specify? Right, I know grid row is... I could I could do the offset from right from the for the appropriate number of hours. Can I do 95%? It I think it is a little nasty. It is a little nasty. Right? Um So let, let's just try this. Let's do this. Put that over here put this over here so I can update my CSS oh that's not gonna work you can't see anything let's put put that on this side that over there um, let's see if we can just kind of force this a little bit just by refreshing some CSS can I do right um, can I do or I I could just do this right just straight in the browser right if I do an F12 here and we click into this chalupa. Um, right, if I say grid row uh, 2FR, right, what if I do 2 auto? Okay. So, right, that starts in grid 2. If I, in row 2, if I made it 1, no. Right? It moves it to the top one. I can move this down to. Okay, so I know how to set it. It's offset start is it's offset from right if the top is 7 a.m. and this line is 8 a.m. This line is 9 a.m. Right? That is okay, okay. And the span, if I make that two, no, it won't do that. Three. Right, how do I specify that it spans more than start on three? I want it to stop on five. No, no! Stop on five. So that didn't. What if I make this display uh, inline block? No. So even though I'm telling it, start on row three, end on row five. Um, no, we need the position absolute so that it knows. <gasps> well, it's not spanning the grid. Right, I want it to span cells. Right? the heck go away if I do that now we've really done it yeah see we're we're kind of mucking this up get rid of the inline block yeah I need it over there but I feel like If I do, what if I do height? What, it doesn't like height. Hmm. Uh, bottom? Doesn't like bottom either. Hmm. Uh, put the five back in. All right. And if I turn off the position, See, I've got an extra row in there instead of having it go down into the next one. Uh, suggesting position static. Nah. See, I want to get, right? I want to get that overlap there. Right? This feels like I should be able to say, right? bottom however many pixels and have it pick that up. Right? And it's not... It doesn't span. If I turn that back on and make this absolute... There it goes. 
Now, that's 10 pixels from the bottom of the entire thing. Right? But I also want it to, it's, it's the wrong height. Right, even though I told it grid row three, right? If I make that top, now it's offset top from there. How do I specify the height? Right, it's it's the so it's top from there, and the bottom is the bottom of the entire. That feels weird. So, okay, just doing grid call, grid row. I'm already, I've already got grid column. I'm already forcing it into column two. And it's one column wide. I'm good on that. That's already right here. I'm specifying where the grid row is. I want it to start by having it with the three there, right? If I turn off all this other stuff, it is properly now. Um, starting at that, if that's the 9 a.m. line right there. Huh. So how do I get it to stretch down into the next thing? Right? If I make this height... Well, that works. Right? Now, how do I specify... How do I know which height to make it? Can I do that? Hmm. What about adding a Z index? Don't do height grid works, but you have things interfering. Uh, no, I don't. Right? The, that's turned off. That's turned off. If I turn that off, and if I added a Z index, right? 10, whatever. Right? It's... I've... I need the position absolute so it overlays over top of the grid. Grid span works so there isn't something else if getting in the way. So grid span will span across and it wants to line up grid template columns and it's specifying the, the specific sizes... Right, and you span with that auto. Grid row end span three. I don't see that in this. Right, it, well, if I expand this, right? Grid row end is auto. If I specify that grid row end... Really? That's not what I clicked. Right, if I specify five and I turn that off, it's it it's doing that stretch. But it's in the same cell. It's not right, it, it created an additional row here. Set the row height on the grid. So right now, the grid. Right, let me click on the grid. There. Grid template columns, grid template rows are one fraction the whole way. So if I were to make these 30 pixels each way. All right, hang on, hang on. I'm going to I'm going to back up and click over here on this not just 5 but span 5 um so why am I getting those extras here if I turn on absolute that doesn't span 5 right it's doing 
it's inserting itself into this and moving things around. I've right turn those off. Right, and I've uh, yeah. So the span five isn't spanning five, right? This is actually what would have been the right column over here. Same thing there and here, right? It's being forced into grid column two where I want it to be. And the left and right should be giving it, when I turn that on, it gives it appropriate. But I'm telling it now when I turn on position absolute, if I turn off the height, and Z index, it isn't spanning all the way down, right? It stays the same height. Yep, turned off height. So, if I turn that back on, right, it's, yes, it's spanning one, two, three, four, right? It is spanning that, but everything that would have been in the next column over, it's missing. And I don't want it to span exactly that number. Really? Really? So I, I want it like that, like this. And if I can specify the height, I can get it to travel across these. What I think I should do is if I go to day view, instead of these being fractions, if I make these... Oh my gosh, are you kidding? Right, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. This is 12 of those. If I do like this... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now I'm forced, I know exactly how tall each one of those are. And I know that one hour is 30 pixels. I know two hours then is 60 pixels. That works for me. But I don't want to just do pixels, right? I'd rather do, instead of 30 pixels going across, uh, right, I'd rather those be EMs. Right, if, so if I do it, that's not quite the right height. If you make it 1.5 EM, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now it's that. And if I click into this, instead of the height being 60, I know that two is really? Really? There we go. Is three EM. And now it'll size appropriately as my font size changes. Instead of it being locked into pixels. Repeat 12, 30. You can do that? Oh, are you kidding? Are you kidding, Mr. Magoo? All right, let's start sliding that in there because I think that's exactly what we're looking for. So let's do repeat 12, 1.5 EM. So now that works. Grid column two, left, right. So we get a little bit of buffer on each side. And uh, then I can do height is three EM. And that should just appear correctly. Okay, fantastic. I do need, I didn't set the row properly there, but I can figure, actually, can I just specify the top? So I don't have to walk through and do the grid positioning, right? Instead of doing that, can I just say top uh, uh, 1.5 EM? Yes. There we go. So now, now I know how to multiply and push that around. Hey, Veronica, good to see you. I agree, Sean. That is way more readable. Absolutely. Make it unresponsive. No. No, no. It's right. It is responsive. It changes by the font size appropriately. I'm good like that. By using the EMs. So, okay. So now we know how to paint that. Let's just fix it so that we calculate the position as one point with 1.5 as our constant 
that we'll multiply by to figure out the exact position inside the grid. The grid. Yeah, math is actually useful. Can you believe it, Threnan? Can you believe it? Um, all right, so if I go do, 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 day view, um, we create a little helper here. Um, so it's going to be, we're going to return a decimal, uh, calculate top, and we're going to pass in the date time off date time. Well, the time of day is a time span. Time of day. And actually, don't just calculate the top. Calculate position. And we're going to return the top and the height. So time of day, and we also need the duration. The duration is the duration duration D duration duration is another time span right uh, duration so I know why doesn't it like that yeah I'm not returning a value yet okay um, okay uh, decimal height Don't. Okay. Um, do that. Oh, you know what? I could have. Nah, that's fine. And uh, I need to name this um, output. Whatever. So, uh, output top. Font size isn't the main factor in responsiveness. Uh, no, but the you're right. The size of the of the thing is. But because I'm doing everything with uh, you can style it through CSS once you have the number of days. <gasps> hey, Ed. Good to see you. Whoa, crumbs. Um, let's do that then. So schedule item. Top is going to be... Um, right, I'm going to do that. I could do that with calc. 1.5 EM times the so 1.5 is an hour so we're going to multiply that by the number of hours right uh, and it's not there it is um, right the number of hours is going to be uh, item uh, right Start date time hour minus seven because seven is the top minus seven. And we're gonna see, I think we're gonna need more than that. Yeah, um, for now, we'll let's just run with that just to get get the simple scenario and we'll make it more complex. The height is going to be 1.5 times uh, item dot um, <laughs> uh, duration dot hours. I know that's not going to be perfectly accurate, but we'll do the more advanced calculation here in a minute. But that should just give me the direct CSS calculation, right? And then? And then? Yeah, and then. Come on. Load it up. Here we go. Availability. And... All right. So the position's wrong. It's got the height correct, but the top is not. Let's take a quick look-see at that top is 1.5 em times two. Oh wait a sec that calc are you kidding my markup is hideous i forgot the closing paren there for the calc now let's try it now nah, i was missing a parenthesis 
I think I've got an extra parenthesis at the end of that too. Let's see. Come on. Do 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 do. Right. Click over here. There it goes. Yeah. All right. Right, and if I add another schedule item here, we call this uh, pizza order. Right, and if we put this on the 22nd, and if we schedule it for 2 p.m. All right, so it's gonna add that. Now, it added it, but didn't uh, force the update on, there it is. So I, I need to also wire up when I add a new schedule item that it forces an update here. Notice, starts at 2 p.m. and it's not positioned quite right. That says 09 heart. Um, yeah, my thinking was the top. The top line is 7 a.m. This is 8 a.m. But visually, I think you're, I think you're right. It, I've got the wrong calculation in there. The, the other thing we need to account for is the space that those lines account are because we're just off. So back over here. Make this minus eight. And we will need to add those pixels in there to get it to offset properly. But um, we do need to have it update when there's a save. Um, so if I go back to schedule state, when schedule is updated, I need to fire the on schedule. Once you get all the state styles, the styles all effect, check into CSS Builder Handy tool for refactoring that stuff. Oh, okay. Um, right, I need to, I need to fire that. Right. Public void selected date changed. Um, I just need to say like schedule updated. You know, which will fire that. So that from my availability. After I add it and I save changes, I'm going to reach into my schedule state and say schedule updated. So I can trigger that event so that it makes the thing appear over on the other side. What do you mean? How did the build not work? New date does not exist in the current context. Uh-huh. Uh, this needs to be a selected date. Yep. That looks weird, but it works. Come on. Builder pattern for CSS classes to be used with Razor components. Interesting. Okay. So availability, load that up. Right. There's that. So if I wanted to put something on here later today for 21st, and let's make this at two in the afternoon, have it go until here, and uh, I need a haircut. So we'll get a haircut, save that, add it in, force the update, boom, it appears. Nice. All right. It's still not lined up quite right, I'm going to save that for next time. We're just a little bit over, but I, I feel really good because I can now click around and it updates these to show that things have been updated, that there is content there. Um, it is a long time for... Have you seen my hair? I mean, it's an hour. Um, but 9 o'clock is now lined up with 9 o'clock. So that looks good. Um, it's not quite lined up right there on that one. We'll have to figure that one out, but I'm going to figure that one out. 
next time. So let's close out what we got here. Save our changes. Hey, where did my... There it is. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, let's see, what did we add here? We added the schedule state object. Yeah, let's wrap up. Let's save these things off. So we can come back to it next time. All right, uh, add everything, commit. Um, now uh, um, passing schedule state between controls, between components. I keep saying controls. Uh, key in my key properly. Didn't get in right. It's so long, my password. And I'll push that out to my private repository. There it is. Um, and we'll be able to work on this next time on Sunday is when we'll get back together. Uh, you're tickled pink that I have a pizza order on my schedule. I think it is the, the border gap, Sean. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, so, we've got our, our user interface now connected so the components talk to each other using this app state component. We've also got the schedule being placed properly with a little absolute positioning and it feels like we're going to have to do a little bit of work to make sure that it's sized appropriately and moving around inside that grid. It doesn't feel like it's stretching and looking quite right there. But I'm feeling pretty good about that. I'm really happy with how that's worked out. You're welcome SMB. Thanks so much for joining us. Let me see who else is streaming right now. See if there's somebody that we can raid. Um, you know what? It's a Friday. I'd like to get, I'd like to get outside of a little bit of uh, tech that we've been doing for a while. And it, you know what? Um, let's see. Who, who's this over here? No, 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 no. Let's. You know who we haven't raided in a while? Uh, I understand Steve's spinning up. He's working on some, some stuff over there. If you want to check him out. But let's let's raid our friend. Um, let's set up a raid call. And let's get ready to raid. Let's raid Fairy Wings. She's doing a little bit of creative work over there. And I think she's going to be playing... Um, yeah, I think she's going to be playing some Minecraft in a little bit. So you're welcome to join me over there on Fairy Wing stream. Um, here we go. And let's set that up. I like to raid new, different folks every now and again. And uh, we'll head over there and say hello. So... Thanks so much, everybody, for watching me. I'll be back on Sunday. This video, like my other videos, will be available in about a day or so over on YouTube. Um, hope you had a good time. We'll, uh, yeah, I'm going to be doing more Blazor on stream. We're learning as we're going along here and building building a nice user interface that we can reuse. And I, I really enjoy that. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Copy out that raid call. Let's get ready to go say hi to Fairy Wings. And I will see you next time. All right. Take care, and I'll be back on Sunday. Thanks a lot.